Welcome back to Chicory's Travels. This is part two in our power upgrade series. If you didn't see part one, I recommend you go watch it and we'll put a link to it somewhere up here. And um, in that video, we installed the batteries and we installed the new power converter. In this video, we're gonna install the um, battery monitoring system as well as the new 3000 watt inverter charger. Okay, so part two of this lithium solar upgrade install is installing the battery monitor. And this battery monitor is by Victron. It's the BMV 712 Smart. And so this um, battery monitor is um, smart in that it has Bluetooth and you have an app for your phone where you can change the settings of the battery monitor. So let's see what's in the box. It doesn't look like there is much to it. Inside we have the monitor itself and a mounting plate for the monitor. The shunt where you all the wiring goes. The cable that runs from the shunt to the monitor so you can see what's going on with your batteries. And then the two wires that run from the positive side of the battery. And I think one is for temperature and one is for the battery life. And then there's also four mounting screws. Um, this, I have to say one thing about Victron, and that is their instruction manual is the most thorough I've seen of any product for the RV. Um, it comes with a quick install guide, which is, you know, sort of standard, and um, the various different battery configurations. But then inside the manual itself, it's in like 12 different languages. Um, and it goes into detail, um, almost geeky detail, about um, battery capacity and discharge rates and how to calculate them. And then it also has settings, for that recommended settings um, for the monitor for lithium ion batteries. So let's get started. Okay, so we got the monitor hooked up here in the battery bay. Um, we just used this one red wire from the positive side of the battery and ran it to the shunt. And then we took the ground and put it on one of the posts for the shunt and took the negative from the battery, put it on the other post for the shunt. Then I ran the cable from the monitor um, through the ba basement bay, which I'll show you in a second, and it is plugged in to the shunt as well. And then I did find out that this extra red wire, which I thought was for temperature, is actually for another battery. So if you were running a second battery that you wanted to monitor, you could do it with this, and it plugs into the shunt. Um, to do the temperature, it's a separate wire that you need to order. But Everything's hooked up now in the battery bay, and I'll show you in the basement and then where we put the monitor inside the RV. Okay, so I brought the cable for the monitor in through the what we call the basement, basically the underneath storage. I just got to finish securing it up here, and it runs through where our water lines and our other electrical lines go, and that runs into the RV by the stairs, which I'll show you next. Okay, so here's where we mounted the uh, monitor. It is just below our AC switch and the rest of our switches for our various lights and tanks and awnings. Um, it is a little crooked, I noticed, but it's okay. The one complaint I have about Victron is that the monitor is pretty small and only has four buttons. So it's really hard to program the monitor using just these four buttons, but they're genius. And they came up with something unique that 
um, eliminates the need to use this at all. So I'll show you that here in a second. So we're inside my computer and one way to program the battery monitor and also monitor your batteries without messing with the small monitor is to download the app called Victron Connect. So I'm in, I use uh, Apple products so I go to the App Store and I search under Victron Connect and you see that one app pops up and that is the Victron Connect app. This is both for your computer and for your smartphone and so I downloaded to both of them and uh, so you just download it on the Mac I think it says get here and then once it downloads it then you say install and your app will open up and it looks like this so it you have a code that's in your user manual that you use to connect via Bluetooth the monitor with your smartphone or your computer um, whatever you prefer and so once you do that it shows up on the screen here and then you can just click that and it will open up the BMV 712 Smart battery monitor. So the display here shows right now that my batteries are at 100%. Um, they're at 14.29 volts and a bunch of other parameters that are monitored. Also in the history it shows your deepest discharge and some other data that you can use. But the main thing we want to use it for now is to set up our parameters for our monitor. So you see here, if you click on the settings, it takes you to the settings page. There are several different um, parameters you can access. So to get the appropriate settings for the Battleborn batteries, um, you go to the Battleborn website and you click on news and then you click on blog. The Battleborn blog has a lot of product information and also a lot of cool stories about people that use the Battleborn products. And I happen to know that information about the BMV 712 programming is on page 3. At the top of page 3 there's a blog which is how to configure Victron BMV 700 with Bluetooth dongle and these settings will be the same if you have the BMV 712. If you open that blog post up there is a video that talks about all the settings you need to change and also somebody took the time in the comments to write down also exactly what needs to be changed so you don't have to keep replaying the video. Take the settings and go back to your battery monitor through the Victron Connect app and if you click on battery you can see there's um, a bunch of different elements there and if you click on whichever one you want to change it'll just pop up a new screen and you can make your changes and that's all there is to it The first step in the inverter installation is getting it mounted. And we can't mount it in the cabinet where the batteries and the other electronic components are, so we're going to mount it in our underneath storage. So let's get started. The inverter comes with a mounting plate or bracket that the, in, that the main part of the inverter sits in. So the first step is getting this mounted where we want the inverter to go. Okay, now that we got the mounting plate mounted, now we got to mount the inverter. It's pretty heavy, like 55 pounds.
Okay, it's securely mounted in place. Now we need to drill the holes to run our wires and then do the wiring. So I chose to drill uh, three holes um, because I'm going to run my AC power through one and then my positive battery cable from one and my negative battery cable through the other one. Okay, in order to set up the Victron inverter, you have to download a program first. So you go to the Victron Energy website and you click over here where it says Downloads. And it comes up uh, right in the beginning. It's called VE Configuration Tools. And so you just double click that and install it and that will allow you to get to the Victron configuration, which is here. So we'll go um, hook this up. Okay, so when you first open up the VE configure program, um, you'll get a pop-up message saying that it should be used by qualified personnel only, and you click OK to that. The first thing you need to have in order to connect to your inverter is a Victron Interface MK3 to USB cable. And then you'll also need a RJ45 cable, which uh, can be like a Cat6 Ethernet cable. Um, you connect the Cat6 or the RJ45 to the COM port on the inside the inverter, and then the you connect the other end to the MK3, and then you connect the um, USB interface to your computer. And then to find the device, you click on port selection, COM port, and auto detect. And then it's going to say target found and retrieving supported function. And then it's going to say reading current values. It's getting the information from the inverter charger. Okay, so the first thing you'll see um, is the general tab. And um, you want it to be 60 hertz, 50 amp. Overruled by remote is checked. Enable battery monitor to be at 95. We will enter our amp hours, which are 400, say OK, and then we'll change this 
to 95. Okay, and charge efficiency, we want to be 0 0.95. Say okay to that. And then I'm actually going to uncheck this. So what you're left with is the 95% and the 0 0.95. These settings come directly from Battleborn. Um, if you contact them, they'll give you the settings that are required in the Victron inverter for the Battleborn lithium batteries. We'll go to the next tab, which is grid. And the country should be none. And then transfer switch down at the bottom should check this, uncheck the UPS function, and AC low disconnect 94, AC high connect 1 1.38, AC low connect 101, and AC high connect 143. We'll go to the next tab, which is the inverter tab. The inverter output voltage is 120, Power assist is checked and it should be 2.0. DC input should be DC input shutdown should be 11.5. To change that, okay. DC low restart should be 12.5. Say okay to that. And DC input low pre-alarm should be 11.8. Enable AES, you can leave that alone. Next we go to charger. And Enable charger is checked, and then lithium batteries gets checked, and then you say lithium iron phosphate, say OK. OK, then you go to the charge curve, which is fixed. Absorption voltage should be changed to 14.4. Okay. The float voltage should be 13.6. Okay. The charge current should be 120. Click OK. Repeated absorption time, one hour. Repeated absorption interval, seven days. Absorption time should be two hours. Okay. And these are the settings that you'll need. And then if you want to send the settings to the inverter, you click Send Settings. And you can send all them, all the, the just the modified settings or all the settings. And we'll say just the ones we modified, say OK. And it's sending data to the device. And then it says, would you like to reset it? And it's going to restart the inverter. Once we see that it is restarted, We'll go back through the tabs and make sure everything looks the way it should. And that's all there is to using the software. We hope you enjoyed this video of the installation of the battery monitor and the inverter. I know it's a little lengthy, but I thought it was important to show all of the programming that has to be done with each of these devices. We hope you come back for part three, which will be the installation of the solar charge controller and the solar panels. See you then.